amazing. <laughs> Welcome back to the Slightly Daily Podcast, episode 115, another Zoom call episode. I got a guest with me today. This is his first time on here, Sam Stockard. Yes, sir. With the Titans. What's good? In the Titans gear. Yes, going to the game tonight. Let's go. Hit me oh, up yeah. going, by the way. Let me know. Titans gear. Oh, I actually random before we really get into this um i bought some bud light the other day and they got like the titans logo and shit on it yeah that's hard it's pretty cool actually <laughs> that's tough <laughs> so um all right sam stockard so i've known i've known you for a while mm. uh like periodically we always just end up running into each other it's kind of right it's kind of crazy how we were like a degree of separation but like it's like oh like if i saw you at walmart it'd be like oh that's fucking sam or like right like whenever I would run into you at Bonnaroo, I'd be like, "What the? That's Sam!" Like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I would always like randomly see you, but it was always like a good time or like yeah. like an event or something yeah. like that. So that's hilarious. Uh, okay, so I I really just wanted to chat with you about your your podcast uh, on IG, man. I love the okay. idea, and I kind of wanted to just chat with you. What kind of like made you want to do that? What who were you watching? I guess I guess. Just, what kind of made you want to do that, man? Like, where did that that uh, that idea, I guess, start to like give birth? I guess. Yeah. So it's actually really funny because I was we were all in the quarantine and nobody was doing anything in life. Yeah. Like literally, everybody was just <laughs> watching movies, you know, uh, reading King. books, playing. Yeah. Like I was living in my PS4 basically. Yeah. So. You know, it just came up one day because I think John Krasinski, he made kind of a little segment called the good news segment where he would just talk about really like cool stuff for like an hour. Yeah. yeah. And I said, well, you know, if I was going to do anything like that, I, it can't be an hour because our attention spans like we struggle with that. So yes. I was thinking, maybe I could do like a 10 minute and like split it up into like little sections because yeah. everybody, you know, everybody has different interests. Like, you know, some people like to read, some people like to, you know, play video games, some people yeah. like to just chill and watch movies and like drink a beer or something. So mm -hmm. um, I just said, I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Like I, I said, I'm, we're just going to do like a positive reviews podcast where we just, there's no negative reviews. You know, it's just all yeah. like love and just talking about like, kind of like putting people on. And I remember yeah. in the first season, I, I was just using my phone like throughout the first season. But people loved it. Like I was like shocked. Yeah, it worked. How, it worked. Right. Like how many people like actually watched it? Like I, I thought you know just like ten people were gonna watch it and be yeah. like, hey, like that's cool. Like, like I a couple I of the homies. Movie. Yeah. yeah, and it, like it like blew up. And people were like, dude, like I saw your podcast and stuff. So now every time I see somebody, they're like, yeah, like I love that. Like you know, you're showing other people support and everything. And I was like, that's yeah. exactly what it was made for. You know, like it's like I don't care about me like at all. Like I never like I right. rarely ever want to like talk about myself. I want to talk about how like this movie has impacted me or how this video game that I'm playing is like kicking my ass or like something like that. So, you know, like people yeah. can say if they didn't have anything to do in the pandemic, then they would have, you know, some suggestions at least, yeah. you know, that would, you know, and we would do like a theme every week, which I think I, mm -hmm. I had a point. I almost just ran out of themes because we just yeah. kept doing it. And I was like, Jesus Christ. So, um, but yeah, like the first season was a different theme every single week and people mm -hmm. were really rocking with that. Right. You know, yeah. so, cause I just wanted to show love to like, different groups uh you know like different even like holidays and stuff like that mm -hmm. so so yeah that's just kind of just how it started in general it started yeah. just kind of just me thinking what if like what if i do this you know like what's mm -hmm. the harm that's going to come out yeah, of it there, you know yeah, like exactly i i love that it's uh it's an interesting thing like positive reviews you know like mm -hmm. anthony fantano you mm -hmm. know him i don't, He's, I don't, I don't know you don't know? Okay, so he does no, like, he's like uh, probably one of the most famous like um, like YouTube music critics. And gotcha. but, like he's known for like giving like <laughs> like a Kanye album like a three out of ten. And everyone's like, what oh, the Lord, fuck? like type shit, you know? Yeah. And like there's like kind of like a negative connotation like with him, you know? But like it's cool mm -hmm. that you're like, all right, there's no negativity. We're just going to chat about some cool shit. And we're gonna if, yeah. if if there was a movie I watched and I didn't like it, we're not even gonna talk about it. Like it's yeah, we're leaving that right. back there, you know. I think yeah. it's cool too, cause uh, I I guess why I I relate to this so much is cause like what I'm doing with Slightly Daily is like really kind of the same shit. Like mm -hmm. my website is entertainment news, video. I I might write an article about the Nintendo Switch game, and then I might talk right. about the, you know the NBA Finals, and then uh, a local artist is putting out a new song like. I love that it's like uh, books too. I mean, like all forms of like media. It's like cool that you were like, okay, I consume this media 
and I'm like telling you guys this this is some shit that you should put on. It's valuable. Like yeah. it's a it's a valuable um uh, it's a valuable thing that you're doing because like people need like you were saying, bro, what were we doing in quarantine? Playing Xbox <laughs> and PlayStation Nothing. and and yeah. and watching Netflix. Nothing. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people might have uh wanted to like start projects but like they probably lacked motivation yeah you know and you might you might have lit a fire under someone like man i could be doing something like that too you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's crazy too like whenever i do see you know some of my prior friends which i'm going to see actually some of my uh, friends from high school a little bit later on since they're both going to the game too but like every time like i'll see them i'm like yeah like i watched like the last episode of your podcast and yeah. i'm like really <laughs> like i'm still like shocked that people watch you, you yeah know? Like, me too honestly that, like the success of it so mm -hmm. so I, I i just really i wanted to get with you on this and i'm glad that like you've been in touch with me because like dude i want to help you mm -hmm. like develop it as much develop it um so we kind of got like the 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 chapter one of it and like right. i want to know what you want from it do you want to keep doing like the instagram nugget clips or like like how we we were when we talked on the phone like last week like about doing youtube is that something mm -hmm. maybe that you would be interested in like long form and then chopping it up or like kind of i guess kind of tell me obviously it's a hobby i know that like, i'm not saying like you should take it serious and like you you know what i'm saying <laughs> which You're you, right but like how do you you know where do you where do you stand on that i guess how, how serious are you about it yeah so I, I like to leave people a little bit on a cliffhanger. I'll uh -huh. say that. Um, so, cause um, as soon as I finished basically doing uh, the podcast last season, a bunch of people were like, why'd you stop doing it? Yeah. Or like, or they're like basically like, is that the end uh -huh. and everything? Which I kind of liked that feeling because when I'm watching a show or a movie, I'm like, wait, is that yeah. it? And then, you know, like how like Marvel does it where it's like, wait, yeah. there's going to be like a cut scene at the end, like saying like uh -huh. this will return or something. So, there may be a little bit of plans for a 2022. I can't say anything okay. yet, but I know that, you know, now I got my camera and everything yeah. uh, situation figured out. I've got, you know, just like an external mic and everything. Mm -hmm. So like, who knows? I, I'll say that yeah. um, definitely around the holidays, I'm going to be thinking a lot more about it uh -huh. because I need to, you know, personally build up, you know, watching more movies and I need to read some more books. Like I'm still yeah. reading one of the books that I talked about in one of the episodes because it's long as hell. So I it's like you. I need to like build up, you know, just a bunch of stuff so I can, you know, pour that out to other people. Yeah, you know so I'm you saying? can like, have something out. to talk about. Right. Yeah. Like some stuff, like, like yeah. literally I need like some substance because I'm at the point now where every time I watch a movie, I'm like, dang, like that would be a good movie to talk about like the uh -huh. next season or like something like that, you know, yeah. so. So we'll see, like, I will say this, like, definitely, I would say stay stay on your toes, like, mm -hmm. if people are watching it, because I think there's a lot of stuff in store for 2022, but mm -hmm. then again, with the way the world's progressing, who the hell knows? Right, so, right, right. So, yeah. I guess kind of what I was asking is, like, do you, do you do this as a, obviously it's a hobby, but do you see it yeah. as kind of a leisure thing, or do you see it as kind of like a business opportunity? Does that make sense? Yeah, so um, I haven't... When I first started doing it, I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, think that it would, you know, become like a big thing to where, you know, it would become mm -hmm. like what you were saying, a business yeah. or like, you know, like an official thing like that. But now that people are, you know, really catching on and that people that I see that, you know, people enjoy it and that, you know, they're benefiting uh, from it because they have, you know, stuff to watch, stuff to play, stuff to read, you know, yeah. who knows, you know, what, mm -hmm. what the future holds. You know, I've never actually played mm -hmm. around with YouTube too much when it comes yeah. to posting videos. But, you know, if I can post them on Instagram, it should be pretty yeah. easy to put them on youtube and everything right because i mean it's pretty like kind of like walks you through all that stuff and everything. yeah it's of course i could i could call you too if i needed yeah to. no so. and that's and that's why like i mean dude i'm i really want to help you if you because like yeah obviously i don't want to be like all right sam let's go take it let's let's take this serious like come on man mm -hmm. uh, if you're not like trying to do you know trying to like that's not something you're trying to do but yeah. I would love to i would love to like help you do develop it and like you know i'd love to like maybe have you work with me on my channel or like maybe you could have like a segment on sightly daily like all right does nice. that make sense like that type yeah. of shit and, and i mean i'm not trying to like step on your toes i'm just saying no, you're I'm, good. I'm just like thinking out loud that's kind of like why i want to work with people and it's interesting because um you know a lot of people out here make music and stuff but like outside yeah. of that as far as content creation goes not a lot of people are doing like kind of like what we do you know what i'm saying like like uh sort of the journalistic side of uh creation you know like yeah. vlogging and videos and like 
which is and I just think it's cool that like you're doing that too because like it's just intriguing seeing someone else do it you know yeah and it's I think it's cool that you know like in, like coming into the world basically you need to know that like nothing is given to you yeah. so it's like whenever I like started the show I was like basically I'm doing this from scratch yeah and like <laughs> nothing is being given like probably like you did the same thing like nothing is being given to you like you're doing it because you want to do it yeah and like because like you think that it may impact somebody's life and like then when you see that it does you're like it like kind of like burns that fire in you to where you're like mm. i don't even care if i'm getting paid like this is like yeah. you know like this is like somebody's watching this and yeah. it's like touching their day yeah. and it's like people need that because like just walking around like nowadays like everybody just looks sad and miserable yeah. and it's like yeah. nobody really knows what what they want to do and it's mm. like well, okay, like this isn't my job, mm. but I'm just going to do what I want to do and talk about what I want to talk yeah. about. You know, hopefully somebody will, you know, have a positive or have a positive like, review about it or yeah. somebody will like have a positive day after hearing it, you know? Yeah. And it, it just, it's really beneficial for me too to, you know, talk about these different things and for people to message me afterwards saying, hey, I watched the movie that you talked about. It really, you know, changed yeah. my day. Like yeah, that. So yeah. I think now that's why. I've been thinking about it more and ha why I haven't thought about it as, you know, like a business or anything mm -hmm. like that, because it, I just really appreciate the crowd and the audience that yeah. does, you know, watch it and rock with me. Because once again, I didn't even know that it would, you know, become a thing. Yeah. So you yeah, did it for you. Grateful. You did it for you oh, yeah. initially. And then it kind of, you were like, wow, other people like this. Okay. And then yeah. that, and like you were saying, it kind of lit a fire on you. Like, okay, well, what if I, what if I keep going? What if yeah. I don't, I, I see what you're saying. Cause like, there was, there was times where, I mean, even there's even like seasons in like recording this podcast where sometimes I'm like, man, I'm kind of dreading editing this video. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, yeah. all right, it, don't, don't even worry about the numbers. Like I'll just, just put it out, just put it out. And then, all right, yeah. cool. We're on to the next one. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause like, ultimately I, I like to have, I like, I'm just building this catalog, you know, and like how you yeah. are too, like you've got seasons of your shit it's like structured and like you were saying it it builds anticipation and i yeah. love I, that's cool that you think that think like okay like you were saying about the marvel or like how um how like uh star wars is you know with all these mm -hmm. extra tv shows they're like yeah randomly they'll just be like boom here's a preview for a cartoon that's gonna come out in two years you yeah. know what i'm saying <laughs> it's neat man uh yeah. okay so let me ask you more like a specific question uh okay what uh what what would you say so so you kind of got like lanes like your books movies video games mm -hmm. what would you say was kind of like as a child the first kind of like form of media that you started that you were like consuming i guess does that make sense oh my god yeah oh it's funny because i do have a harry potter on the background probably was, all at once but like what would yeah you, I, well, I was like a huge bookworm. I remember mm -hmm. that as a kid, just because I felt like it was a gift to be able to read somebody else's work. Oh, yeah. You know, like and like you can like look into somebody's mind, and like they can be dark, like Edgar Allan Poe. They can be, you know, like a really good artist, like it can be like the Bible or something. It it just blew my mind. It's like somebody wrote this. <laughs> yeah. Like like literally, like somebody may have yeah. wrote this on like a scroll and with like a quill. Like yes. it blows my mind that like somebody went to like immeasurable like depths to like get this book out <laughs> like they may have like quit their job they may have like uh -huh. you know like sold their house they may have like lived in the 1500s and were reading their words <laughs> like the book i'm reading yeah. right now is from 1897 it's wow. dracula okay. and it still blows my mind how it still holds up yeah like people love this book and it's mm -hmm. good you know yeah. like it's not like one of those books where you're like oh i gotta read this book again it's like wait i want to know what happens so yeah. i think books was the first thing um, of course, I was a big movie guy, but I was one of those kids where I watched probably the same like three movies yeah. like every day. You know, like I don't know why I didn't watch other movies. I was just crazy. But yeah. um, I also was just I was a huge video game nerd too. I was big and I think I had my, my first video game like platform or like console was a PlayStation Two, Ooh, which yeah. had like the best games of all time. You know, so it's yeah. like I was just basically living in my PlayStation Two as a kid, and I didn't have a memory card. So oh. I would try to beat the games. I don't know why I didn't buy memory cards. I remember. I, the, I remember. I remember that grind because uh, <laughs> my see, I was a always a sports guy. Me and my brother, we yeah. always we always played Madden and NBA Live. Mm -hmm. So you kind of didn't need to save anything. But, yeah. Uh, but there was some games like oh, shit. I'm trying to think like uh, specifically just the first one off the top of my head, Spyro. 
Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. I still and have Spyro. Dude. I remember like we couldn't. We we would always start from level one, you know, because yep. we, did, we didn't have, we didn't have the memory card. I don't uh, think I ever beat it as a kid either. I don't think it I did either. So long, I was like, <laughs> why do I not save my money? Like I just keep like spending it on food and whatever. Like yeah. Golly, so. But uh, all right. So uh, were were you into like Nintendo and stuff as a kid, or was it kind of? Oh yeah, PlayStation. Yeah, I was definitely. Yeah, I was into just all of them. You know, in yeah. general, like I was. I think I was lucky enough because all my cousins were big like Xbox guys, so mm. I got to like play Halo and stuff growing up too. And then I think I just had a PlayStation, so I got to play like you know like. Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and yeah, Clank, like Kingdom yeah. Hearts, like basically like the go tos for PlayStation um, and everything. But I don't know. I think I had, <clears throat> I think I had a Game Boy um, mm. back in the day. Like I played basically. I was a huge like Legend of Zelda. Um, I don't even know if I played Mario that much, but of course I do now. I still like I play like Super yeah. Mario Odyssey, and so like I have a Switch now yeah. and everything, which was a hassle to find. Like I found one in the pandemic, Man. and I was like for the gold rush. Mm-hmm. Or Dude, something well. I so I'm a big Nintendo guy. I got, I Hell still yeah. I still have a the square one the SP Me too. and it works. And then I also have like my old Game Boy Color. Like I'm I'm a collector and I nice. it doesn't, you got to collect those. It doesn't have it doesn't work anymore. I don't. I mean I probably could like get batteries and maybe clean it up. But like uh, I, me and my girlfriend we purchased a. A switch. I'm trying to think. It, it was this year. It was probably like March. Uh, we got. We were just at Walmart. Was it Walmart? Yeah, it was Walmart. Randomly, we weren't even going there to look. And like, we were talking about it for the longest time because like, she was like, "Yeah, I want to get a Switch so we like we can play games." That's what's cool about Nintendo. Yep. Anyone can play. Right. And then uh, we were walking by, and they had two. They had the Animal Crossing one, and then this all black one. And I was like, ah, "Let's get it." I was like, "Let's get it." Right. And, and then we split it, and then I love it. I bought uh I got the Pokemon game, obviously. I'm a big Pokemon guy. It's so good. And then, uh, what else? Oh, I got the 3D All Stars game. Okay. Yeah. Super I think Mario. My, my buddy was talking about that. He said so it's pretty bad. It's tight because it's got Super Mario 64. It's got Sunshine and then Galaxy. Galaxy okay. is the is a Wii game, and then gotcha. uh, Sunshine is a GameCube game. So it's like three OG games in one. But yeah. This is, this is the kicker, though. So they only made physical copies, and they stopped printing them in March. So, come a year or two from now, they're like gonna be like impossible what? to find. Yeah, man. I need to buy one immediately. Then that's not for tragic. real. Because like <laughs> I, I personally didn't grow up playing Mario that much. I like yeah. you know obviously we all played Mario, but like I was like a Pokemon guy, and yeah, and like I was like, man, because Mario games they just hold up. Like even mm. all even the new ones. Like you were saying, I haven't played Odyssey yet, but. Oh my gosh, you got to! It's so but good. But it's just a game like anybody can play Mario, and it's just it's yep. fun. It's like childish, but like I don't know. It's it's kind of it's interesting because like you go to like PlayStation or Xbox, and the games are more like serious. I guess they're like in your face. Yeah, like they're that, they like demand your attention. Like yes. I like I told you, I've been playing the Dark Souls games. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't even pause it. It's like you're like running around. And I remember I ran back to like the save place where it's like a little like cathedral. And I was like, okay, like they can't find me in here. Dude, follow me into the church and like continue to just beat me. Like oh I'm like, okay, the game is like glitched, but it's like this rig to kill yeah. me. Basically, like when I played the Switch though, I think the hardest game I played for Switch was The Legend of Zelda. Mm. Uh, Skyward remember, Sword? Was, uh, no, not Skyward no. Sword. It was the one before that. What, Breath, what was the name of that one? Breath, Breath of the, of the Wild. Wild. Yeah. Yeah. That game is it's really good, mm-hmm. but the dungeons are so confusing. I'm yeah. like, all right, I gotta use the IGN like little, you know. That's kind of the thing no with way. that's kind of the thing with Nintendo is almost half like pretty much like half of the game is like a puzzle. Like figuring out yep. like you know, like Super Mario, it's kinda like, okay, how do I get out of this this maze? But it's a puzzle, literally. Yep. And like, yeah, sometimes you got to use the walkthroughs, but like, it's kind of, I don't know. It's kind of like, that's, that's where the difficulty is. It's like, it's not physically like the task. Like, you know, in Call of Duty, you got to like crouch and pop, 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 like shoot him in the head. Right. There's like like, tactic to it. Yeah. That's like tactical. Uh, Nintendo games are more like strategical. Like, yeah, it's cool, man. It's lighthearted. It's uh, interesting. What other games you got on the Switch? Yeah, so I was gonna say if you haven't played Paper Mario, that one's really fun. I've heard uh, it's a I, different I saw, battle though. Or a different I saw type of fight. I saw you do a, the review on that, and I was like, okay, cool, because like, dude, Nintendo went crazy. Whenever they put out the Switch, they put out so yeah. many 
game period so many games like they were yeah. like, okay we're revamping mario we're revamping pokemon we're right doing, we're revamping mario kart or yeah they, they basically go to disney where they're like yeah like we're gonna remake like all of the old movies again yeah <laughs> they just like did it they yeah. basically did that but i was gonna see i'm sitting there looking actually at some of my games i do have the new uh super mario game it's like a 3d world it's pretty mm. fun, but that one's more for like a group of people. Like it's mm. not like a one player game. Like I, I usually yeah. get bored if I'm like just playing it by myself because it's also pretty challenging. Yeah. Uh, because I haven't even played the Bowser's Fury. It's like apparently yeah. that's like an add on to the game and I haven't even gotten to it yet because yeah. I just keep getting destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's a fun one. Once I beat all the all the games I have now, I probably will cop uh like another Super Mario game. Cause like Yeah. Uh you know my friend Parker, he's a we relate we're just we've been friends for a while but like we were right we're like nintendo kids at heart he, yeah he, i was a pokemon guy and he grew up on zelda so like that's okay. he's like a zelda super fan he could tell you all the facts about all the games like i could tell you all the facts about all the pokemons and shit like that yeah and it's cool because like nintendo man they're just they're out here they're like yeah they're its own thing it's like xbox and playstation they're in like its own lane i get they're kind of in the same lane but nintendo is like dude you can't even compare like, no it's, you, it's like like what you were saying anybody can play nintendo like i yeah. remember whenever cause i've been working from home right like i've been working from home and um i remember when i used to be in the office uh, before the pandemic like people would just bring in their switches and be playing it would be like people like 40 years old like play, you know playing switch <laughs> yeah. on the breaks i'm like what yeah and it would be like it'd be like you know like pokemon and stuff yeah. like that and like luckily i have i think i have the the sword one mm -hmm. I, I don't think I, I i think i do have the sword one it's um, cool, but, you know, man. some people like the shield one too because it's different yeah. pokemon and i'm yeah. like this is crazy <laughs> so yeah uh okay man so what um what do you feel about uh like i guess how to how important would you say like the movie portion is have do you do like just movies or do you do like tv shows too yeah so um i used to do a lot more of tv shows in the mm -hmm. first season um i think in the second season i talked more about movies just because i was watching more movies and stuff like yeah. that um i had watched a couple of tv shows but i'd already talked about those shows they mm -hmm. just had you know another season so i was like well i can't talk about those again yeah but you know i think that's my favorite part is talking about movies because yeah. i've i've come to basically every i've come to know now that every time i step into a movie or even when i'm watching it at home and you know like i have like you know drinking an ipa or something just hanging out mm -hmm. like it's like it becomes more of an experience yeah you know it's like somebody made this yeah. like somebody worked extremely hard like <laughs> multiple people spent like, a lot of money yeah. to make this happen yeah it's like a lot of money like time sweat like tears have gone into this movie mm -hmm. And like you know like somebody like really wanted this movie to like to come out yeah and so you know if, if people have been saying it's like really good reviews and stuff like that that's when i love it because i'm like ooh, like now you know it's going to be good and yeah. you know sometimes i like it when nobody you know has a reviews for it they're like oh i haven't seen it then it like builds your anticipation you're like ooh, like yeah. this might be really good yeah so, a, a so i think so, yeah the, right like the movie portion because my favorite theater in that uh, in nashville right now is the bell court and they always show just like these really like random like off the wall movies mm. But they're always like really good with ratings, and I'm like, what is this about? And yeah. it's like one of the movies like recently was a uh, was called Pig, and it was with Nicolas Cage, just like him and going crazy because somebody like stole his pig. It's new, whatever. Yeah, it's what? called literally it's called Pig, <laughs> and like I watched the preview though, and I was like, wait, it made me want to go see it. So it's like it's hilarious that yeah. like just all there's so many different movies, and like some there's somebody in the world who's like who is impacted by a different movie, you know, like. Mm -hmm somebody has likes every single different movie and like you can talk about it you know you can start a little community about it like you can do a podcast about yeah, it like, yeah what we're talking about it's like it's nuts that people can relate people can you know start relationships people can you know right. start their own marriages over just like being like star wars nerds or something yeah, like that connecting like, it's, yeah it's special. You, it's special so do you, do you feel like you can talk the most about a movie like like so, do, you, do you feel like you have the most like if you're like okay we're gonna do a a review episode i got my yeah. book my game and my movie i watched like what category do you think you could like talk the most about does that make sense yeah i think movies because not only is there actors in included in it that you can talk yeah. about that you can say you know 
which, hey, by the way, if you haven't seen this actor in this movie, you need to check it out so you can almost like build off that. Yeah. And it's also, there's music in it. There's a soundtrack usually in movies, unless it's like a silent film, which yeah. you rarely get in nowadays. But yeah, we talk is... about that. <laughs> Yeah, you like rarely like it. Yeah, I, I don't remember the last time I've actually watched. I don't even know if I've Pro- seen it. Probably in film, school, but... probably like high right. school English class. You know, the art teachers Something. they made us watch yeah. silent film just so we knew what a silent film was. Right. <laughs> Which is, basically. I guess, important kind of you know to at least know what it was because that was a time that was a period in time where it was that was the thing. Yeah, think, think about uh, what's his name, uh, Pee Wee Herman. He didn't yep. talk at all. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like a performance yeah, art in a way, a performance art. It's like yeah. It is. It's like it's crazy too, which I need to watch this movie again recently. It's called At Eternity's Gate. Mm. And a lot of people don't know about it. It's Willem Dafoe acting as Vincent Van Gogh. And mm. I always wondered, I'm like, I, why do I like this movie so yeah. much? And I just learned like recently that my grandfather, his favorite artist was Vincent Van Gogh. Ooh. And that he loved music. And I was like, wait, like there's a reason why my soul like yeah, is being it's like in your movies. DNA. Right. And then yeah. you watch it and like the music is beautiful in it. Like he's like talking about like being a struggling artist that nobody knows who he is at the time. Like everybody thinks that he's like mentally crazy and yeah. stuff. And like and then like he doesn't even know how he died. Like that's like his mind, like he lost his mind like at the yeah. end of the movie. But Willem Dafoe is acting as him and you you forget that it's like Willem Dafoe, you're like, Is this really Vincent Van Gogh? This and it's like <laughs> Yeah, it's like the movie, you, like what you were just saying, like you can talk about so many different things mm-hmm. just about one movie. Like mm-hmm. you could talk for like 10 minutes about that just as like yeah. one episode. So I feel like I I completely, uh, I, I agree with you 100%. Because like to a certain degree, the mm-hmm. video game review is like, this is fun. Yeah. You know, and kind of that's it. You might be like, yeah. okay, this is fun because uh, it lets you do this. But at, sometimes it's kind of just like, this is a good game. And that's all yeah. I have to say. You know, right? You know, which is like, it's it's still a, an important piece, and people still want to hear that, though. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. like, uh, I don't know. It's cool. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Random question. So, You're good. are you like a like? Do you buy like uh, your Switch games like physical, or like, are, like do you like to like have DVDs and like physical copies of shit? Does that make I sense? I do. I, I'm a physical copy uh, yeah. nerd. I will say that just because the tangible like part of it, it just feels right. You know, like yeah. whenever I bought the last of us part two, I'd been waiting like that and the ghost of Tsushima. I had been waiting like, you know, months for that game mm-hmm. to come out. And I was like, Ooh, so eager to get it. And then the pandemic hit and they were like, we don't even have any physical copies. I was like, well, oh. I felt so bad that I had to download it. Yeah. And you know, then again, like it's fine, you know, that you can have it on there, but it just feels right. You know, like to have like a physical copy just to look yeah. at and be like, I have this. Like, I feel oh, the yeah, same. Like, I got this. I feel the same. I have a uh, so whenever we, me and my girlfriend, moved into our apartment, uh, mm-hmm. it, it took a little bit for our internet to get connected, so we didn't have like Netflix or anything. And gotcha. we went to Goodwill, and we cop some DVDs. First of all, that's like a secret hidden gem for it is. DVDs. And like mm-hmm. I cops like a uh, it was like a, a Chris Rock compilation. It had like four Chris Rock movies. I got an Adam Sandler one. Uh, there you go. I, got, I got like a season of the Chappelle show and then like another random movie. And it just kind of made me realize like, like Netflix and Hulu, there's like a finite amount of movies. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's say they have, I don't even know a, a number. Let's say they have a thousand movies. Well, there's like a hundred million movies in the world. So like yep. if you really think about like that sample size compared to how many movies there are, and you can only watch these movies if you have a physical copy of it. It kind of yep. made me think like, you know, because like, uh, like for a while, Chappelle show, you couldn't find it anywhere, you know? Right. You know, or like uh, one of those random B-list Adam Sandler movies. Like that, it wasn't, unless it was maybe on TV, you're not going to yep. see that shit anywhere. But like I have nope. <laughs> it and I can watch it any anytime I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know. There, It's just something about DVDs and I feel like. I mean, we're already in the digital age. We're all up in it, you know, where streaming mm-hmm. is like number one. And like we all have a Netflix subscription or Hulu or at least one, you know, most of us have more than one, you know. Yeah. But it like it's it, it's there's like I was saying, there's like a small we're looking at a small sample size. We think that like, oh, this, Netflix has so many movies, but like they really don't. If you really think about it, yeah, like, the history of filmmaking for 100 years like it's not a lot like it's a small portion of the 
the the grand scheme of like all the shit that's created right yeah it's funny too that you keep saying like you know adam sandler and these you know people that we basically grew up with yeah like you like we watch like all these like goofy movies and we're like Uh oh like you know like this movie isn't you know oscar you know nominated but like it's special to me like you know it made me laugh as a kid and you know i was talking to my dad the other day we were watching you know just some cheesy adam sandler movie and i just out of nowhere i i thought about it and i was like (laughs) it's going to be a sad day when Adam Sandler goes like, you know, like yeah. it's like, we like, we, you feel like it's yeah. your friend because uh-huh. like you watch all these movies, like it just makes you like geek basically. Yeah. And it's like, it's just like a feel good, mm-hmm. like actor, you know, yeah. besides uncut gems, which was like a yeah. really good, like serious Still movie. Good. Yeah. He's always, you know, he's always been like somebody that just like makes you, you know, feel yeah. comfortable and you can laugh. Basically. Yeah. Happy so. Gilmore. And then his character in big daddy is like, dude, big daddy yeah. was probably one of the first, like, uh, mature ish adult movies that I probably ever saw, you know, like yep. as a kid, like I remember watching Big Daddy when I was like early elementary school, you know? Yep. <laughs> yeah, which I'm sitting here thinking now about the movies that I watched when I was younger, which I probably shouldn't have watched. My parents should have been whooping my ass. <laughs> I was watching, uh, like, I was the weird thing is I watched more scary movies as a kid than oh, I do yeah. now because everything now I'm just like I too yeah. disturbing and it's like too dark for me but like I remember I grew up watching like the Michael Myers movies and stuff yeah. like that and now I watch them and I'm thinking this is terrifying how yeah. did I watch this stuff and you know be fine and everything because yeah. it even shows certain angles from Michael's viewpoint yeah. it's like you feel like you're the killer I'm like how did John Carpenter even do this yeah. like this is crazy like I saw a chart um, today where he was talking about all of his scary movies John Carpenter uh, that he had come out with and I said wait, I've seen a lot more of these yeah. than I thought. You know, I had, you know, like even as a kid, I'm thinking, how in the heck am I, you know, not mm-hmm. possessed at this point? Like right. watching these crazy movies. But, you know, it made me just appreciate it. I was like, dang, these came out in the 70s and 80s and they're still like better yeah. than most movie, our scary movies nowadays. One thing that I've really started to realize, and maybe this is me, just us kind of getting a little older, but I feel like uh, movies and TV shows are kind of lacking originality. Cause yeah, I, it's kind of hard to explain, but like new ideas are kind of hard to come by. Like Parasite, dude. Yeah, that was one of the best movies ever. That's in the Hall of Fame of movies, you know. Crazy. And yeah. and it was just something new and fresh. And I mean, the fact that it was in Korean was the craziest shit too. But like mm-hmm. that, that's what he, that's what made it even more special because the story like was so like look they were like look how good the story is it doesn't even matter if you don't know what they're saying you know yeah um but like like you were saying earlier about how there's like remakes and shit that's kind of all that that 2020 and on that were that like uh movie people are like producing there's not really like right. fresh fresh new ideas and maybe maybe i'm a little jaded but like i don't know man i because like you go back in those early late 90s early 2000s ish era of movies i feel like that was just there was just so much like different shit like uh ben stiller movies and you know his like goofy act character person and then like you know you had brad pitt being like a serious actor like you know tarantino like yep yeah like i was actually i was on like a tarantino kick yesterday where i was mm -hmm. like what tarantino movie should i watch which i'll probably watch kill bill volume two again because that's like one that i haven't seen in a while Mm -hmm. but i would say you know because i have folk fiction you know i have uh, the hateful aid and stuff like that but you know even with directors and stuff too like i've Mm -hmm. really grown to appreciate like the directors you know like i I was watching uh goodfellas yesterday like martin scorsese i was like it's amazing that this man is still like dropping amazing movies like he Mm -hmm. i think he has another movie in the works and I'm so glad that he got to release the Irishman because I haven't um, watched you know, that yet. Oh my gosh, it's so yeah. it's good, but it's long. I've Jeff heard it's like four hours. Into, yeah, yeah, split it up into like two movies basically. Because yeah. I remember I left the theater and I came back after like ten minutes, and it was still like two it's hours like, left. God I was like, damn. Jesus. So yeah, I heard it, it was great funny. though. I heard it was oh, like a, a good mob movie. I, I was like, okay, and I, I Goodfellas is one of my favorite movies. Yeah, and then Wolf of Wall Street too. Duh. Yep. Like, um. Okay, man. So. Let's transition. I want to chat a little bit about Bonnaroo, man, and then we'll we'll get oh, yeah. on with our days. So, you excited? Man, <laughs> as excited as I can be. I'm not yeah. even like prepared, honestly. Yeah. Like, I still got to go. I got to go find my easy up, like my tent and my yeah. pants and everything. But you know, I'm just I'm grateful that I have you know a friend group and like a support yeah. group that you know 
um, cause you've, you've probably been in our camp and everything. We have group camping this year. And okay. you know, the fact that people even invite me, you know, to go to yeah. Bonnaroo, like I, it's I never special. even thought it is special because yeah. you know, I'm, I'm not even, I don't know if you know this, but I'm not even supposed to be in Tennessee. Like when I graduated college, like I went out to LA cause my sister oh. was there okay. and I was out there for about a month. And just to kind of like test the waters and everything. And yeah. I said, you know what? And I left right after Bonnaroo, like the mm-hmm. day after. Like I was crying leaving Bonnaroo because yeah. everybody was like, like Sam is moving. So yeah, yeah. Um, I just, I, and when I got out there, I was more miserable than I expected because I missed everybody here. Mm-hmm. And it was like, like God basically called me back to come to Nashville because I got my job, you know, like immediately after that, you know, I got like my own place immediately after that, you know, like. All of my friends I still have, and you know, all these mm-hmm. same friends still invite me to Bonner every year, and still you know invite me to their weddings, yeah. still invite me to like their events, and I'm like, it, it just it really humbles me to know that you know there are people that do care about you and yeah. want you to be around them, like they yep. want you to be included, and that's why I try to pour out that same uh, you know response to other people. So yeah, I um, whenever you called me last night, I was with my Bonnaroo group, and we were kind of just yeah. touching base, and you know just kind of getting prepared and like so i vlogged the last two bonnaroos and i was looking at it kind of from like a visionary perspective like okay this is a moment in time i'm capturing this moment and Mm -hmm. 10 years from now whenever we're all old and fat we can go back and watch these videos when we're young and and you know doing stuff and uh because so the 2018 one i did uh, there was like eight eight guys and three of them right after like by the end of that year moved out of state so you know what I'm saying it was kind of yeah. uh, bittersweet but like we still have that we can go back and relive that because like right. more, than, more than likely we'll, we will all never be in the same place again you know what I'm saying right. and that's that's what's kind of why I love Bonnaroo so much is because you can kind of no matter how much we we don't talk or how busy we all get, we can all kind of go back for that one weekend, come together, have a yeah. good time, and rely on that. Because I mean, dude, look, I mean, we all got jobs. We're busy as shit. You yeah. know, we're getting later in our twenties. The more that happens, the more people get married. The more people have kids, and then yeah. you know, it's people move. Like I was saying, like you know, like I was saying, people just people grow apart naturally i mean that's just a part of living living life yeah that's, that's yeah, just it's... why that's why i appreciate bonnaroo so much <clears throat> yeah i i would say too there's certain people that i only i feel like i only see at bonnaroo yeah you know like it's like like it's it's really funny too because even if i get lost at bonnaroo which yeah. happens a lot more than people would expect <laughs> you know yeah. like you get like separated from the group or something like that or you know you got to you know, you got to go pee or you got to go, you know, get another beer. And then you never see your friends for, you know, three or four hours. Yeah. It's hilarious, though, that you somehow you'll find somebody, you know. Yeah. And it's it's so strange, like every stage, especially it being in Tennessee, it feels like it's in our backyard, you know, yeah. it's only an hour away. Like people now can lift an Uber to Bonnaroo, which is crazy. They have a yeah, little that, drop drop off thing. Um, but it just it blows my mind. that it's, it's basically a little city mm-hmm. and everybody knows like each other in a way. And if they don't know each other, like they'll hang out with you. You know, yeah. it's, it's one of those things where. If you look lost and separated and somebody sees you, they'll more than likely go out of their way to say, hey, do you need people to hang out with? Yeah, like, you know, up? like, yeah. or, hey, or like, are you good? You know, like to make sure that you're okay. So that is a beautiful thing about Bonnaroo is uh, it's like crazy. You would think whenever you get that much people in one place, you would think like wild shit's going to happen. But Chaos. It, it's <laughs> literal. but it's literally like the most safe place like I've ever felt in my life. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's hilarious, too. Like, I remember um i remember at bonnery one year it might have been uh like the the previous year or like the two years before somebody actually stole from me and they didn't take like anything valuable like they, they didn't take my phone or like my wallet they just took like my cash and like they just wanted to like have a good night they didn't want to ruin my like whole yeah, life that's like they didn't take like my wallet or anything like my yeah. keys or anything which was beautiful because i was like okay like this is the nicest like criminal i've ever you know experienced <laughs> you know like it's it, it, it was hilarious yeah. too because it also just, you know, what you were saying, you're literally camping right beside people you don't know. But yes. everybody just has that same respect saying, you know, we all believe in karma. You know, we all believe in like good people. We're not going to mess with these people. Like that's yeah. just, you know, unacceptable. That's not Bonnaroo's kind of their code. Yeah. Everything, so. Oh, man. So you're going down. What, what day are you going down? Wednesday? I think, well, apparently the hurricane winds or something is supposed to be hitting Wednesday morning. So Actually, you know. yeah, I saw... 
Bonnaroo did post on their IG like a weather advisory. So I don't yeah. know. I just want to get in there and hopefully I know. Hopefully it's not as bad as they think it will be, hopefully. Yeah, some people are getting there. Actually, you can go in on Tuesday now, apparently. So people are going to be partying yeah. on Tuesday. I'm sure like grilling out and drinking and stuff. But cause yeah. I, it, it blows my mind that, you know, even when Bonnaroo still isn't happening, mm -hmm. there's still a party with, you know, the plazas. There's yeah. still, you know, yeah. groups of people playing live music there, yeah. you know, that are talented. It's, it's amazing. It's an amazing place. Mm -hmm. Well, Sam, this was this was amazing too. Uh, I, I like we like we were talking about last night. We need to do a before and after Bonnaroo. So, oh yeah, yeah, like, we got to like, do one in real time or yeah, one in real life. So. Absolutely, man. Um, do you got anything else you want to say? You got any questions for me, bro? I hope, dude. You no, got a, um, you, you got a good day ahead of you, man. Yeah, it's gonna be a long day. Uh, yeah. I just want to say, God bless you for allowing me to be on the show. Absolutely. Um, it's, I'm extremely grateful, and I think you also need to realize that you're extremely talented at what you do. And, you know, the fact that you're still continuously doing this, you know, that is that is a blessing. And so I'm just I'm happy that I can be on. And, you know, I'm just I'm happy that I can have a friend like you that I can yeah. call if I do or need help or anything with this. So I just I just want to say thanks. Yeah, absolutely, Sam. Um, episode 115. Have hey. a great day. Go Titans. Even though it's the preseason. <laughs> yes, who are we who are we playing? Uh, I think we're playing the Bears, which I'm actually kind of excited to see okay. Justin Fields. Because yeah. I'm actually, what's weird is I'm actually a Michigan fan, so I okay. hated him at Ohio State. But, but now, um, it's, but it's now, cool to see yeah. him now. Right. It's like, I yeah. mean, the Bears have been bad for so long. It's like, they might yeah. as well, you know, if they have a good year. So, mm -hmm. but yeah. All right, man. This will be up soon. Thank you. We will definitely, I will definitely see you at Bonnaroo. I got your phone yes, number, sir. so no excuses. You can't hide from yes, me. Yes, sir. <laughs> All, All right, right man. Brother. Peace out.